Funny Frogman, Martin Pants, the ultimate Battlefield 2042 tier tactic list. Hello again. <laughs> Welcome back. Ah, 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 ah. Gentlemen, t that was in fact and strong start. I'm already today in. is the day. I have my tactics, I have my tier list, and I have you, my loyal subjects. Oh. What? Much better. Today, oh. I'll be ranking all of the interesting <laughs> tactics Battlefield 2042 has to offer in a tier list. Some are really bad, some are really good, and just like this game, many are pretty scuffed. Oh my god. <laughs> Start at the bottom, at F tier, and move all the way up to S tier. But, before we get into the list, you must be curious about my opinion on the game itself. Well, Amazing. I think many of us would be in agreement. Yes, the game is broken. Isn't the sandstorm the best feature in the game? Yes, the game is unfinished. And oh. yes, it probably should have been delayed. <laughs> but, an experienced bean beret such as yourself will not see this as a bad thing. In this chaos, you will see opportunity. Oh, fuck. You'll I, I love that he, it looks like he's like, he's doing the, um, what is, there's an old Gmod thing where, uh, he, person was really low to the ground and they were walking like that, that, oh man, that, that took me back. I can't remember the clip, but God, it was we'll funny. We'll see things that can be exploited. And today, we will be doing exactly that. So, let us begin. Mm-hmm, lettuce, got him! And starting us off, once again, we have the long range sniper. Oh. Last video, these guys were at the bottom of the list, and here they are, yet again. Wow. I feel like some people in chat are gonna be like, wait, what do you mean snipers are bottom tier? If I go ahead and search long range sniper in my YouTube comments, you'll see yeah. a bunch of whiny bitches claiming that it's about aim and that their KD is high, or that snipers are meant to be in the backline because that's what they do in real life. Yeah. Battlefield. <laughs> <laughs> Just like real life. Give me a fucking break. No. Using a sniper rifle in this game is actually quite fun. So why would you choose to go way, way beyond what is a reasonable range is completely beyond me. You can't even spot people at that distance, and you don't even get a bonus for shooting them in the head. F tier. I feel like, uh, I feel like this is... Oh, that, that's a perfect pause, actually. That was untimed. I feel like there's some, some bias in here. <laughs> I personally, Battlefield Back Company 2, I love playing, I love sniping people halfway across the Alaska map, it was great. Next up, Raid Shadow Legends. Shadow oh, I'm no. not joking, this video is sponsored Raid. by Raid Shadow, Shadow Legends. Legends. The greatest RPG PvP mobile game to ever exist. Uh, in a world. Raid Shadow Legends. Legends. There exists a whole bunch of angry, angry people. A whole 600 different champions. Do you think I can count that high? No chance, buddy. There are big boys. There's this guy. There's Alexander Kostiliev, superstar Mark, counter strike bitch. player from Team Navi. More on him later. Oh. And best of all, you can download it for free with the link in the description. What do I like most about this game? One, women. Two, running into a dungeon and assaulting the local orcs. Three, pilfering ancient places artifacts for 23 XP. And four, PvP battles made to prove that I am better than you. I am raiding a dungeon. I am getting eaten by a massive dragon. This happens on a shockingly regular basis. Now, gentlemen, <laughs> the most exciting news ever for Raid, Raid Shadow, Shadow. Legends, a brand new boss. He's big. He's wild. It's the Hydra with six heads. He wants to enter your house. Head of suffering, head of blight, head of torment, head of mischief, head of decay, and head of wrath. That's a lot of heads, but does it give good head? Only one way to find out. <laughs> um... H Hydras, yeah, I, I would see a lot of people, a D&D, &D, Monster Manual, Smash or Pass, I feel like a lot of people would say Smash on the Hydra for that reason, actually. And gentlemen, do you like Counter-Strike? Well, guess what, idiots? There he is, the greatest Counter-Strike player of all time, simple as a guy with a bow. You must act fast. After January 28, 2022, you can no longer require Navi Superstar Simple. There's never been a better time to get started. Click the link in the description or scan this rapidly moving QR code to get Epic Champion Vergus, 200,000 silver, one energy refill, and one ancient shard so you can summon your local Unky J. Derek. Wait a minute, I mean awesome champions as soon as you get in-game. How do you get all this awesome loot? Step right here. Oh. Once you're in, you can find easy. me in game under the name Martin Zetopex. And if you're fast, you can join my clan. And it's that easy. Just click the link in the description, and I'll see you in game. My biggest worry about getting into Raid Shadow Legends is I know that I I, I am I am notoriously a min-maxer. I would try to min-max, and that would take a lot of money. <clears throat> Next up, Levolution. Aww. Yeah. <laughs> if you aren't aware, in Battlefield 4, there were several map changing events that were really, really cool. Often they did actually make the map worse, but the fact that you as a player could make an impact on how the map is played is pretty awesome. I mean, that's actually really cool. You could develop a whole game around this and it'd be great. Now, all we get in this game is this shitty antenna tower. <laughs> Incredible. Shoot the supports and it falls down. All these signs blow them up and they fall down. <laughs> or the side of the ship, interact with these two things and it opens up. It's just lame. Battlefield 4, a game yeah. that is eight years old, 
and also released in a completely buggy mess, still managed to figure out massive scale destruction. And this game just has this. It's kind of just sad. It's it's cool, I guess. Like, it's I8, but I mean, I don't know. F tier. Oh, For another oh. item that's not just kind of sad, but really sad, we have C5 launching. What? Oh, wow. Oh, 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 that actually made me depressed. Oh. For those who don't know, in Battlefield 4, you could set off a bunch of C4 underneath a friendly vehicle and send them absolutely flying. In the build-up to the release of 2042, they showed this in the advertising material for Battlefield Portal. Like, so they're clearly acknowledging this, right? How do you get from this to what we just saw? Like, is that deceptive marketing or what is that? Yeah, <clears throat> I don't know about that one, Captain. I, I would say that that's pretty misleading, allegedly. Well, not even allegedly, right? If you acknowledge it in the marketing material, but then in-game you get that, it's like... Yeah, that's, this was this was not sold under the best intentions, clearly. And on release, we got this. Three, two, one, go. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Kind of like, what, 20 feet? Deep vein thrombosis. Are you fucking kidding me? It was literally in the trailer. What the fuck? Ah! F tier. F tier, yeah. Negative F tier. And for our final F tier item, drum roll please. Hazard Zone. In its current state. It is just plain boring. What is the point? Playing Hazard Zone is a complete waste of time. For those who don't know, Hazard Zone is in a similar vein to games like Escape from Tarkov. Basically, you insert it as a character of your choosing, pick a loadout, shoot a bunch of AI, maybe shoot the players, extract, and that's it. Oh, okay, so it's DMZ from the new card, okay. All of it. Eh? There's no base building, nothing to work towards, no special unlocks, nothing. Basically, there is no reason at all to play this mode. At least in its current state. I mean... Did they at least try to, like, subsidize it and or supplement it with, like, increased EXP? Maybe? I wanted to get a clip of us winning a game of Hazard Zone, but I just couldn't. Not because our aim was bad, or our positioning was bad. No. It was. We couldn't win a game of Hazard Zone, because we couldn't fucking play one. Every Amazing. time we queued up, we'd get into this screen, someone would get booted, and then we'd return to the menu. Wow. F tier. That's bad. Starting us off with D tier, we have the hacker man, Rao. As you can probably guess, he can hack stuff. <laughs> now, I do think there's some potential with this ability, but in its current form, hacking is pretty bad. On paper, it sounds alright. Hack an enemy vehicle to disable the HUD, disable countermeasures, and disable right. weapons for about 10 seconds. You can right. also hack enemy players to disable their HUD and spot their teammates nearby. But... I mean, this, yeah, this seems... This seems good on paper. Oh, how are they gonna ruin it? It has a major drawback. Hacking stuff takes around 5 seconds to complete, and during this painfully long window, you just sat there with no weapons, watching your finger go beep 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 boop 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 in line of sight of a dangerous enemy vehicle. Yeah. One strategy I did try was hacking helicopters. This disables their flares, which means I can shoot it down with an AA missile. Problem is, the helicopter gets a warning that it's being hacked, so it just flies away. Hacking yeah. tanks is also kind of useless, because once it's hacked, what do you do now? If you yeah. want to run up to it and throw some C5, it can just drive away, and like, what was stopping you from c 5 it in the first place? Yeah. Kind of dumb. If Dice is listening, I reckon a fun thing that hacking could do would be randomizing the movement keys for vehicles. It would create a lot of confusion and be kind of funny. Yeah. D tier. I, I think it'd be pretty funny, actually. Oh. AT mines. Oh. Boring. <laughs> the most fun I had with AT mines was using them like C5 and throwing them literally on top Did of enemy vehicles. How do you f how do you f up a mine? Is my question. Like how? Cause like you set it down and <laughs> when something goes over the mine, it explodes. Like how do you mess this up? Have, a have an AT mine. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, sure, they're a little bit better than Battlefield 4's AT mines since you can throw them horizontally just a little bit. But come on. They're AT mines. D tier. Armor plates. Huh. Boring! Wow. <laughs> Amazing. I can oh boy, it's my whole thoughts on, you know, the Call of Duty armor plate system summed up in one clip. Yeah, now you're right, it's boring. Take one, maybe two extra bullets. Very fun. 
I don't understand. Why does every FPS game have to be Warzone? In this clip, I place in a plate, a helicopter strafes me, and I survive on a sliver of hell. Yeah, sure, it's probably pretty good, but like, I've never been in a situation where I thought to myself, damn, I really need to run armor plates right now. Yeah, sure, they're probably really good. They're just boring. D tier. I mean, is like if I remember correctly, armored plates will its body shots, headshots in certain games still have the lethality. That I'm kind of okay with, as long as the lethality is there. Next up, a not boring, fun, but not particularly effective strategy. Rushing the enemy spawn on a VTOL as soon as the map starts. You'll probably only survive 10 seconds, but oh my god, the sheer volume of ants to shoot is a sight you really must see. As soon as the game starts, jump into a VTOL with some friends, look for the helicopters to drop all the infantry off, fly towards them, get a few kills, and then die. Yeah? Pretty fun, but also dumb. Yeah. D tier. So, <laughs> you can use a rocket launcher to kill tanks. Yeah. We all know no. that. But in this game, you can also just use a regular gun with armor-piercing rounds. That's right, these rounds allow you to slightly damage tanks and other vehicles direct- Damn, you know what doesn't have AP rounds? Call of Duty. Remember when they made AP rounds not AP rounds? <laughs> so you can still equip AP rounds, but they don't have the armor-piercing on them? Hell yeah, God! With small arms fire. I managed to unlock it for the PKP machine gun, which could hold 100 AP rounds. I did the same with three friends, and we ran around like idiots shooting tanks with our guns. I thought yeah. the strategy would be pretty good, since four people lasering a tank with AP rounds would surely do a lot of damage. But no. no. The damage was very disappointing, only doing about one-fifth of a tank's health after dumping a hundred rounds into it. Interesting concept, but not that good. D tier. Oh. Starting us- Wait, D tier? You, you put it in C though. But for C tier, killing people with backblast. <coughs> Fun fact about yeah. rocket launchers, they shoot a rocket out of this end, and to propel it forwards, they shoot lots of hot, hot gas out of this end. Badger's favorite! As it turns out, this gas is very dangerous. And surprisingly, Battlefield 2042 models that in-game. So they bothered adding that little de- Anyway, <laughs> we can use this knowledge to perform some pretty funny stuff. In this clip, I swooped down onto this roof with a guy on it, ran up next to him, spun around 180 degrees, and sent him away. The MLG clip right there. Not effective. But very funny. Fun. C tier. Yeah. Nice. Now, next up, the specialist Pike. Now, initially, I thought she was really good, perhaps even overpowered. But it turns out she's not. My God. She's got this pretty neat ability where you gain temporary wall hacks. Sounds powerful and is powerful, but it has one glaring weakness. When you use it, you get spotted, and not yeah. just in a small range. No, no, no. Literally everyone on the enemy team can now see where you are on the minimap, and a convenient big ass diamond is put above your head. Huh. <laughs> Why? I don't understand the design decision here. The wall hack isn't even that powerful. Lost like one microsecond, and the enemy team can see what's on the Knowing this, if you ever see this at the bottom of your screen, that that is the definition of overtuned. Look at the minimap to know exactly where the sneaky pike may be. C tier. Oh. Bot servers. Nice. Holy shit. I mean, to be fair, if you don't have players, I mean, and people want to play the game, right? Is, isn't this the only way you'd be able to play the game? These aren't particularly exciting, but they do make for very easy grinding. Remember how I said I unlocked the AP rounds with three friends? Well, to do that normally, I'd need to kill over 200 people per person. Yeah. That would take forever. So instead, you can just kill bots. Now, bots are completely brain dead. There's, there's video evidence of Kip playing like a bot from Rainbow Six Siege. It's beautiful. The catch is that after 350 kills, they no longer count for anything. But 350 kills is just about all the attachments for any gun. I yeah. found the easiest way to kill bots was to fire up Kaleidoscope on Breakthrough. You cap the first two points, and then you need to cap the flag on the skyscraper. As it turns out, this is more or less impossible for your team's bots to do on their own, so you're free to go up there, run behind the elevator, and prone next to these pipes. I'm not sure why, but the enemy bots have no idea how to deal with you, and you're free to rack up as many kills as possible. <laughs> they just have to tweak the pathing on the AI, that, that's, that's fixable. In one game of doing this, I got all of these attachments. Pretty dumb, but you might as well take advantage of it. C tier. Amazing. Next in our list, Dozer. This Dozer. guy. He's got some good resistance against explosive damage, and has this, a ballistic shield. Now, I was under the impression that the ballistic shield would be pretty shit like it is in Battlefield 4, but it's actually pretty fun. For one, you can sprint with the shield, and it's still pointed towards the enemy. It can magically reflect bullets right back at people, and best of all, it's a one-hit kill if you wax on with it. These three things combined make sprinting at people pretty funny, and could result if you getting a few kills here and there. 
I mean, I know Call of Duty deals with this, at least Modern War- the new Modern Warfare 2, right? It deals with this by Semtex and or drill charges, right? I mean, my fa- my personal favorite is drill charges because it's funny when you just hear the noise and then you just see points. It's really funny to me, actually. Um, kind of dark, kind of funny, actually. Um, so I'm not sure how 2042 deals with uh, the shields. In this clip, this guy sees me, pulls out his rocket launcher, shoots me in the feet, I don't die because of the explosive resistance, and then I bop him on the head. Wow. C tier. Yeah? Nice. And finally, for our last item in C tier, the Tuk Tuk. Tuk Tuk! I love it. In my playtime of this game, I've managed to run over two people with it. It's it's perfect. That That is one of those... <laughs> this person pr- should probably just alt F4 right there. Like, you, you can't come back from that. <laughs> it's very weak. It's very slow, but most importantly, it's very fun. Yeah. Nice. C tier. Gentlemen, we've arrived at B tier. And to start off B tier, we have dog. Dog. Robot dog. The robot dog. Dog. If you ever come across an enemy robot dog, you'd know that they are incredibly annoying. You can dump an entire mag into them, and they'll still be there, just chilling. There's really no downside to calling in a dog if it's available, and if you're lucky, it might even get a few kills. B tier. I love it. Dog. Now, as we all know, I love stabbing people in the neck, looking them in the eyes, and softly whispering in their ear as life slowly drains from them. Sleep. Yeah. Sleep. I'm sure you do too, and this tactic is exactly that. Melee only. In this game, stabbing people is quite fun. It kind of looks like punching people in the head, which, as you can see in this clip, I enjoy very much. Fucking just stab him in the head! Just stab him in the head! Just stab him in the head! Why is it not hitting? Amazing. <laughs> Simply stab him. Just stab him in the head! For optimal stabbage, I'd recommend running Sundance, wingsuiting around, sticking a spawn beacon behind somewhere cheeky, and attacking people from the rear. Nice. B tier. Yeah? <laughs> Next, we've got Irish. Who is an Irish? He's a what? former US Marine, nice. fighting against the US as the Russians. Oh. Oh, yep. He's got this wall thingy and this trophy system that can destroy projectiles. I don't know These about walls that one. are actually really good, especially because you can see through them without getting shot through them. He's not particularly exciting. He is an Irish, but he's pretty good. B tier. Yeah. I was born on a Dublin street. <laughs> and for the last B tier item, we've got the Lat V4 Recon. Now, the default loadout on this thing is okay, but doesn't really live up to its true potential. Once you get enough kills with the minigun, you unlock the 30mm cannon. Oh. Now, this thing is incredibly busted. Nice. This is how it's meant to be done. Tearing across the massive sand dunes of Doha, blasting the shit out of anything that moves is truly something you must experience for yourself. B tier. Fair enough. Moving up to A tier, we begin with the hovercraft. Yep, the vehicle everyone and their dog has been complaining about. Honestly, as far as OP vehicles go, it's okay. As far as I'm aware, I thought it was called Battlefield Hovercraft for the longest time because of the prelevance. And then I learned it was Battlefield 2042. It's pretty strongly armored, has a good minigun, is very fast, yeah. it's very difficult to drive. But, most importantly, it can do this. Honestly, I, I guys, it. if you're listening, please keep this. It's fun. I love yeah, it. boys! Wow. A tier. Skyboat. Next, we've got two characters that share the same niche. Falk and Angel. These two are both medic-style characters that support your teammates. <laughs> Falk can heal your teammates and revive them to full health, and Angel can give people armor and ammo. I'd say Angel is a bit better, but they're more or less the same. Oh, and also, Angel's voice lines at the end of the game are comically bad. Yeah, Angel does it again. <laughs> wow. Good one. Wow. Chomp, 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 chomp. Hey. <laughs> Boris. 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 Next, we've got <laughs> Boris. His whole thing is that he has a sentry gun. When placed down, it automatically spots enemies and shoots them. But this is not the best part. The best part about the sentry gun is that it gives you wall hacks. Once the sentry detects an enemy, it outlines them in a convenient, angry red color. Unlike Pike's wall hack thing, it actually lasts for quite a while, and in the meantime, the sentry can also just shoot them by itself. Not only is this pretty powerful, but it's also quite fun. I love it. Perfect. Why did it oh. blow up? Oh, I saw that. A-tier. Next, nice. combining tracking grenades with AA missiles. For those who don't know, the character Sundance has this, the grenade belt. One of the grenades on this belt is this, 
the anti-armor grenade. These are meant to be used oh. against tanks or other armored vehicles, but as anyone who's used these things for more than two minutes would tell you, they prefer to instead track helicopters like four, five, fucking 600 meters away. Why? There's a tank right there, helicopters up there. We can use- Wait, it, 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 wait. <laughs> if it has, pre has preference for aircraft, <laughs> does the grenade know where it is? Is this to our advantage? You see, the grenades are slow and almost never hit helicopters, but they do cause the incoming missile alert to be tripped. Yeah. Anyone who knows what they're doing in an air vehicle knows that this instant incoming missile means it's an anti-armor grenade, and they won't flare since it's not going to hit, and that'll just waste their flares. Now here's where the mischief comes in. Uh -huh. Throw the anti-armor, pull out your AA missile, and shoot at the helicopter immediately. There's nothing to tell the pilot about multiple incoming missiles. <laughs> That's dirty! But more often than not, they won't flare, and the missile will hit. Yeah? A tier. <laughs> That's dirty, I love that. Next, this gun. The SVK. I suspected DICE would nerf this gun into oblivion when the game first released, because it was that good. They definitely have nerfed it, but it is still very powerful. Basically, this gun is a DMR that can kill in two shots. Nice. All the other DMRs in this game kill in three or more, so two shot kill is pretty ridiculous. Yeah. Not to mention, I went on this hardcore server one time, where everyone had 60 HP, and the gun was able to one shot everyone. Just fucked. Huh. Yeah? A tier. I bet Kiwi uses that one. And finally, the vehicle call-in system. Many times I've had this exact problem. I've captured an objective, shot a bunch of dudes, and everyone's dead. Now what? I don't really want to run all the way to the next objective. That would take forever. So instead, I whip out my tablet and call in a recon vehicle. This system is pretty great, and allows for some extra spicy stuff, like calling in big vehicles on top of skyscrapers. Seeing as there's no more C4 launching, this is the only way you can do this now. <laughs> yeah. A tier. Okay. Nice. We're done with A tier, now begins the truly great strategies. You may remember in my Battlefield 4 video I mentioned using the jet as a battering ram and smashing into the enemy at incredible speed. This yeah. item was placed nicely in C tier. Not particularly effective, but definitely pretty fun. Well, yeah. in 2042 it's gotten significantly better because of one simple change. You see, when the game starts, everyone is forced to spawn in. If you're in a vehicle, you'll get spawned in that, but if you don't choose anything, you get dropped in on a helicopter as infantry. Most people find this quite annoying, but I like it for one main reason. These little ants the helicopters drop off are our targets. Yeah. As soon as you can, oh, grab no. the jet. Wait. Oh no, he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna take the jet and he's gonna eject from the jet and kill like five people. I'm calling for it. the game to start, locate the boys, Go! and plunge into victory. <laughs> In this clip, I managed to kill 13 unsuspecting ants with this dumbass strategy. Wow. I, I mean, he's still positive. He's still 13 and 1, to be fair. S tier. Proximity nice. sensors. I know what you might be thinking. Proximity sensors? Really? Yes. But not for their advertised purpose. Proximity sensors are grenades that work by spotting enemies in a short radius. These were in BF4, but are so boring that I didn't even include them on the list at all. But, in 2042, they are much, much better for one simple reason. If someone you spotted is killed, then you get the assist. Okay. This means if you throw your proximity sensor in a densely packed area, say a flag on breakthrough, then everyone that it spots will be shown on the map, and once they die, are given to you as an assist. Huh. These bad boys will net you number one squad and most kills and assists with some consistency. Yeah. Vice recently nerfed proximity sensors quite a bit, which is unfortunate, but they're still pretty great. Yeah. S tier. That's nutty. Now, for our first S tier character, we have McKay, the dude with the grappling hook. McKay is an expert at the hit game Above Us. Above, above us? Above us. I'm sure many of you saw this coming, <laughs> and for good reason, because grappling hooks are cool. There are almost endless situations where getting above the enemy would give you a massive advantage, and uh -huh. the grappling hook lets you do exactly that with ease. People just don't look up. Generally, if you can get above somebody, they will not look up. His passive ability is also pretty great. Increased aimed out sight movement speed. Here's the normal speed, and here's McKay. I can't tell you how many times this has saved me, simply because he's so goddamn quick. The only drawback of running McKay is that his voice lines are really obnoxious. Come on. This is too easy. Ooh, sorry. I mean, I am as shocked as you. Honestly, his facial capture is tricking my- it's, it's tripping my uncanny valley right now. I'm not sure what it is. There's something about his facial animations. Oh my god, just shut up! <laughs> Casper. Now, I know what you might be thinking. Casper? Really? He's better than Boris and his sentry gun? Yes. But it's not immediately obvious why. Casper has two signature abilities. 
a dude detection thingy on the bottom of your screen that tells you if dudes are nearby, and the drone. The first ability is honestly kinda crap, but the drone, oh boy. Now, if you use Casper the intended way, I would say that he's probably about C tier at best, but uh -huh. the drone can be so much more. You see, this little drone can not only spot people, which is sort of useful, but it can also disable tanks and other vehicles with its EMP pulse thing. From experience, this is really, really annoying, but this would only put him in about B tier, maybe A tier. The most right. fucked thing about this drone is that it can carry... Your Amazon delivery! <laughs> You use it as an Amazon del delivery drone for explosive ordnance. I love it! Five. Enough C5 to destroy a tank instantly. Wow. Bat. <laughs> and the best- That's gotta be annoying. The spot is, you don't even need to trigger the C5 yourself. By ramming into the tank, it sets it off automatically and huh. destroys the vehicle instantly. What the hell? This fucking stupid tactic easily makes Casper the best anti-tank specialist in the entire game. I, love I mean, it. seriously. What can they do? It's such a- I hope this is still on the game, because I really I really want to go through and play for 2042 as it stands. Small drone that tanks pretty much never see it coming, and even if they do, what are they going to do? Shoot it down? No. I honestly don't see this being in the game for very long, so use it while you can before DICE patches it out. S tier. Amazing. For another anti-tank weapon, the NTW-50. Oh. It's on dance. Ooh! <gasps> This gun is just plain sick. I love it. It fires this big ass bullet that can one hit people in the body at considerable range, given they aren't wearing armor. Now, yeah. That's what armor's good for. Stopping people from you. Oh, uh, we, we have come full circle. Using this incredibly niche and difficult to use weapon for killing. This gun. Oh my. The sounds. The weight. It's just so cool. As a gun. It's okay. If you ignore the slow bullet velocity, slow aimed out sight speed, slow walking speed while aimed out sight, very slow reload speed. Okay, it's a bit of a pain in the ass to use, but old man hitting nasty shots with this thing is the most satisfying thing in the entire game. Yeah. That was dirty. Not to mention that once you get 120 kills, you unlock the AP rounds. These are also pretty insane and can kill hovercraft and other light vehicles in only a few shots. Very fun gun. If you really want to go for gold, I'd recommend using the NTW-50 and the revolver. The revolver can one-shot people in the head, yeah. and the NTW can one-shot people everywhere else. S tier. Capture. Next, I love it. the final character. Uh, I wonder how much one of those costs. <laughs> one you've probably been waiting for the entire video. Sundance, aka the Squirrel Woman. Oh! Holy shit, oh! the wingsuit is incredible. Even if she had no other abilities, the wingsuit would easily put her in S tier. Not only is it fun, but it's the best way of sneaking around, traversing, and just playing the game in general. I can get from almost anywhere on the map to anywhere else given there are enough shipping containers. Yeah. Let's say I want to get from here to the ship on Discarded. All I gotta do is wingsuit here, do a bunny hop here, game some more speed for another bunny hop here, and bang! That's disgusting, actually. I'm on the ship. Not to mention she's also got the grenade belt, which we talked about earlier, scatter, which is pretty good against infantry, anti-armor, which is quite good against vehicles, and EMP, which is pretty similar to Rao's hack, so it's shit. Equipping spawn beacons as her is also incredibly powerful. S tier. <laughs> best character. Amazing. Now, remember how Casper is the best thing to use against ground vehicles? At least for now. Well, this tactic is the best thing to use against air vehicles. At least for now. The Soflam. It basically turns your M5 recoilers into a lock-on that kills helicopters in one shot. Get yourself a friend who lasers helicopters and the mm. occasional jet with the Soflam while you shoot at it with your rocket launcher. The rocket launcher is a one hit against the scout helicopter and attack helicopters, and to top it off, flares will sometimes, as in like 50% of the time, just straight up not work. Huh. It is unbelievably powerful, and I don't see it staying in the game much longer. Hmm. S tier. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of air vehicles, the best air vehicle in the game. Not the scout helicopter, not the attack helicopter, and not the jet. Oh? The VTOL. Oh no. Good god, I love this thing. It's got high speed, two miniguns on the side, and this. The 50mm cannon. Big boy. The VTOL can win in just about any fight against just about any opponent, with the exception of the AA Wildcat. The 50mm is so powerful, it's insane. Enemy helicopter? No problem. Enemy jet? Yeah, easy. Tank? Piece of cake. And not yeah. to mention the two miniguns on the side are also incredibly strong. What a vehicle. Truly. Wow. A work of art. Yeah, uh huh. S tier. Nutty. Switching gears a bit, the ground vehicles. Which do you think are the most powerful? Bonk. I'll give you a hint, it's not these. It's oh. not the Mav, not the Hovercraft, not the Wildcat, not even the tank. I would argue that the best land vehicle in the entire game is the M5C Bolt. 
In this single game, I managed to get over 100 kills just by using it with a 30mm cannon. Huh. It's fast, easy to drive, can run away from almost anything, can drop down mines in front of tanks, has this freaking rocket launcher that can track and kill helicopters. Oh, oh, come on! Come on! Oh. Yes! Wow. It's got everything. I think these clips really speak for themselves. S tier. Yeah, no, S tier, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I could agree with that. Now, gentlemen, that's the list. But I'm not done yet. That's right, oh. boys. It's now time to list this game's very, very large amount of bugs from least fucked to most fucked. Oh, no. The bugs. Oh, no. So many uh, here, bugs. Here we go. My XP doesn't add up correctly. I have died, and now the camera's over here. All of my vehicle loadouts have been reset now. Fucking set them up again. Intense rubber banding. Hitting the ground at high speed, and I'm totally fine. Unable to <laughs> load persistence data. Fuck. Spawning right in front of people. What the fuck? Why am I spawning in front of him? Unable to connect to EA servers. No wow. loadout bug. Where are my loadouts? All I can use is the default M5. The boys have dropped in. Everyone has jumped out, except for Kai. <laughs> there he goes. Tristan has lost all motor function. Yeah. This invisible um. platform on hourglass. Smashing into buildings with a jet. Phasing through the sand dunes. I am horizontally challenged. I am vertically challenged. Let's get out of this helicopter. My knife has shit hit Fucking just stab him in the head! My helicopter can't turn to the left. Let the bodies hit the floor. Uh. This guy won't die. I'm inside the oil rig. The game has started, but I'm stuck in the map here. What the fuck is going on here? Well, Can't revive oh. teammates if they're close to a wall. Tristan is the- he, he was in fact above us. <laughs> 69. Not a glitch, but very funny. Nice. Falling into the elevator shaft. Falling through the map, swimming here, and flying back into the map. Getting yeeted into space. Tristan is driving a tuk-tuk and walking around at the same time. I love it. How? I died, and now I can't respawn. Nick has gone completely invisible. Where'd he go? And finally, if I knife this ladder in the right spot, this happens. Ooh. Oh. 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 <laughs> Fast as fuck, boy! <laughs> so, fellas, that's it. Behind the scenes on the second channel here, another video here, new videos coming soon. Goodbye. I just. That was an video of all time. <laughs> Man, when I finally get around to 2042, it's gonna be wild. Oh, wow. That was. That was amazing. I'm so glad this exists. Thank you, Martin Cedar Pants.